G'day everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an On The Back Wheel review. After using the updated 2024 Triumph Tiger 1200 Rally Pro for 2000 kilometers of hard adventure riding, I thought it was worth giving you my thoughts before handing the big rig back to Triumph. I covered everything from single track, sand, mud, back roads, and highway work. My time with the Tiger 1200 is coming to an end. And I have to say, this is a fantastic bike, guys. I've loved my time with it. Uh, I've said it as much during the videos. It's a great bike. Yes, there are some things I can nitpick on, which we will do soon, but overall, as soon as I got on the bike, I just felt so comfortable on it. I felt immediately natural on the bike and it just inspires confidence for me, just in terms of the riding position, the feel and how it handles. Everything's just really well put together on it. The engine is an absolute beast. It hammers, uh, yet you can lug it and cruise on it. The suspension is really good to a point. Don't get me wrong, you can find its limits. Uh, the brakes are absolute stonkers and still great off-road. You can turn all the electronics off, which I think is fantastic, but then it has the electronics there if you want to use them. Uh, luggage, I've been able to put on my luggage, no issues at all. Uh, could use maybe a couple more tie points at the back, but I've made it work quite easily for this luggage. Fuel range, probably use a little bit more, honestly. Um, I do a lot of off-road riding, I like to twist the throttle and I've been getting, on the trip, 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres, and about 300 out of a tank. I have done a fair bit of road riding, if I'm honest, and a lot of cruisy dirt riding, so that's probably a best case scenario. Uh, it was averaging about 6.2, 6.3 litres per 100. So depending how you ride, you can get better or worse. I could definitely get worse on that and probably get it up to 6.5 since I was doing a lot of off-road. 6.2 I would say is my usual average if I take out the easy highway riding I've had to do to get here. Um, and it'll probably even better just going to Sydney today and bring it down to probably 5.7. So it just depends on the riding that you're doing. But look, it's a 1200 triple that makes 150 horsepower and goes like a shower of shit. It's gonna use fuel. So considering that, it's probably pretty good. Um, there were times though I thought maybe I could use a little bit more. Speaking of the engine, it's honestly one of the best I've ever used. It is so good guys. It absolutely hammers. I mean, it's way too fast for dirt. Most of the time you're just using that initial part of the throttle and rolling it on. But if you want to wick it on, corners come up real fast. <laughs> the beauty of it is you can then lug it and you can cruise with it through town. You can run a gear taller or a gear lower and rev it out, no issues at all. And it's very smooth. I know the last one, people had complaints about the vibrations. This one, no issues at all. Uh, clutch, fantastic. Gearbox, fantastic. The shift assist, I've said it in the past, it takes a little bit to get used to initially. Well, it's just not get used to so much as it's different. It's like, kind of like squishy. It just helps you change gears really easy. And it does it from pretty well all conditions, like low, high. When you're really caning it, it does feel a bit slow to change gears, but everywhere else it's perfect. Uh, great on the trail too, when you're going up and down gears, it's cruising along, it's fantastic. Suspension. Um, it's fantastic, it's very good. I've been going through all the modes. I just put it in comfort mode road mode most of the time, which is three out of nine. So you get nine suspension settings from soft to hard. And that's three out of nine. Three and fours are really good for cruising uh, and general road use. When you got off-road mode, you put in off-road pro. I find that's the best setting. That puts it in six out of nine. I found that too soft for me. I put it to eight of nine. That was pretty good. However, the rear is a little bit too soft. I'm 90 kilos. I've got probably 12 kilos of luggage on there. It's bottoming out quite easily at times. So I'd like a bit heavier spring rate in the rear. The front could use just a little bit more bottoming resistance on the big hits. But for standard adventure bike riding, even for pushing the pace a bit, it's pretty good, guys. Like erosion mounds, 
medium hits. It's really good. Um, and the fact that you can just change the modes, you want to ride the sport mode on the road, tackle those twisties, you can do it with a click of the button, it's fantastic. The brakes, as I mentioned, absolute monsters. Still got the feel off-road. You can turn ABS completely off front and rear, which I ended up doing for off-road pro mode. It's quite easy to do. You have to be in off-road mode though. Um, traction control as well, we can turn off. Traction control uh, is great on the road. Off-road, just turn it off. Um, it'll solve a lot of problems if you do that. Onto the handling of the bike. I have to say, it's a beautiful handling bike, guys. It's so easy to ride for a big bike. Does not feel like it's weight at all until you get into technical stuff and it gets away from you. Then you're like, whoa. And I did have to pick it up on one occasion. Yeah, it's heavy, I struggled. <laughs> I really struggled, but it was worst case scenario because I was in the mud, slipping around trying to pick it up with luggage on. So, if you think you're gonna drop it or you think you're gonna struggle with dropping it, probably look at the 900 or a different bike, a mid-size capacity adventure bike that's a bit lighter because yeah, it is heavy. No doubt about that. <laughs> Holy dooly, that's heavy. So that's all the things I really like. What do I not like about it? The first thing that comes to mind is the electronics. They're great, but they're also annoying in that to go from off-road mode to road mode and the other way around, you have to stop. You have to stop the bike. So I don't know why that is. There'll be some reason why. They'll tell you why. I don't think that should be the case. It's probably the traction control, to be honest. That's what I think. But in any case, it's annoying. So every time you get to an off-road section, you get to stop, turn it on, then sometimes you misclick or it doesn't go into it, then you get to stop again. It's just fiddly. I found what I was doing is just leaving an off-road pro mode. Even if there were short road sections, I'd be like, oh, hopefully there's more dirt up ahead and I don't have to change it again. So you're kind of missing out your safety features. We're not going to go into whether you know you need them on a bike or not, but it's got them. They work well, uh, especially when I've had to use the ABS a couple of times on the road. It works great. Um, off road, yeah, I turn it off. But yeah, the electronics can be annoying. Speaking of that, I've put this through probably a worst case scenario on this road. Lots of rain, mud. If the electronics were going to stuff up, they would have. And there's only like one or two occasions where I'm hitting the on button and it wouldn't turn on. And then I just waited a little bit, then it would turn on. I don't know. There's a lot of electronics going on here, guys. Um, and the steering lock, I had this on previous trials as well. I find it fiddly. Sometimes it'll lock, sometimes it won't. What I usually have to do is turn the bike off, hit it, it'll get an error, press again, then it locks. I don't know. Probably rather do without it to be honest and just have a normal lock uh, but that's what they've gone with the lights are pretty good it's got the auxiliary lights they're pretty good i'd like just a bit more power i did some night riding and i thought oh i, could... I wish the high beam had a bit more oomph and also the auxiliary lights ah the wind buffeting i mentioned this in my first ride on it that it has a bit of wind buffeting i've changed helmets and it's better but it's still there uh Someone commented that they put a lip on it and that made it better. If you're shorter, it's not gonna be an issue because if I hunker down on the highway, I'm just below it and it's pretty good. Or if you put it down, then it doesn't do it as much. So there's a little bit of buffeting in there. Boop, 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 boop. The screen does protect you from a lot of the elements. Uh, I've ridden in some really cold conditions these last few days and it's protected me quite well. When I stand up, I realize, oh, it's actually freezing. But I hunker down, heater grips on, and just grin and bear it, it's pretty good. So it does protect you a fair bit. Some other nitpicky things, the dash. These are all nit, a lot of these are nitpicky things, guys. The dash, I wish it had the kilometers and the time and everything just there, along with the speedo. You don't have to flick across to show your kilometers. Uh, on your tank or how much you got remaining. There's enough space there and, you know, it's all there. I don't see any reason why they couldn't with a redesign or something of that. Uh, here's something also to note. 
I've been using my quad lock up here. This is actually the mount where you push this to move the screen up and down. With my phone on it, Pixel 7 Pro, it kind of wiggles it and it'll wiggle down eventually. So then the screen's down in a low position. So maybe a bit more tension in the spring would be good. I don't know if they thought to that people would use that for a GPS or a quad lock, but it works perfectly with a mirror mount. Um, and where else are you going to put it? There's no GPS bar. So yeah, a bit more tension there would be good. Other than that, guys, put a set of decent hand guards on it and a better bash plate. Go riding. This thing is a beast. All right, that's it from me on the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. I really like it, guys. Uh, great bike. If you haven't, check out my other content on it. Hit that subscribe button and keep it on the back wheel. Catches.